Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So this week, slightly different layout, a bit less per app, but more apps. So we'll see how that goes. So first up is Obsidian. They've got update 1.10.5 and actually 1.10.4 was also released. Uh, mostly just bug fixes and quality of life tweaks. So canvas has been fixed, basis formulas have been fixed. Table view supports single column data. Right to left language has been fixed and various different other things. And if you want to see the full change log, you can of course go to the Obsidian change log and see various different things that have been tweaked in the past week or so. It is only for the Catalyst version for the time being, so I'm sure it'll be released to the other versions in due course. There was a good video um, on how to build an Obsidian database in five minutes uh, with a CSV import tutorial. So it is quite a quick video and just basically goes through what you can do with it, how you can build it up using Cloud Code, etc few plugins within Obsidian, and then you can bring in a CSV book library or book data, for example, into your Obsidian Vault. So well worthwhile checking this one out if you're interested. And there's a couple of interesting Reddit posts, how do developers of Obsidian make money? This was an interesting one because I was also asking myself the same thing. So given that it's free and everything, but I'm a happy user of Obsidian. But the question, I can't find any explanation. Obsidian is top quality software, why is it free? Sometimes they say the product if the product is free, you're the product, um, and basically lots of comments of what's going on. And obviously sync and publishing are do cost money, but the app itself is great and fantastic. So definitely worthwhile looking into that post if you're interested. And another one was I moved away or I moved away to Obsidian. So this is from Logseek to Obsidian. Uh, basically, OP's a little bit bored and tired of waiting, the lack of releases, the lack of plugin support. Um, several times just had various different issues and they moved to Obsidian and used basically three key plugins and they talked through of how they were able to do it and quite a few comments as well um, just going through with a bit more detail so if you are also on the fence or are interested in moving from Logseek to Obsidian definitely worthwhile checking that one out and getting a few hints and tips on that one. Next up is AppleNote, one that I don't really publish a lot on, but I did see that they had quite a few updates in the last Q3 2025 update. So I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing. So uh, Good Life Dashboard, connecting mood tags and victory value, unstoppable momentum task streaks, time travel through your productivity, pain filters, mobile speed, uh, so mobile is getting a lot faster, especially on Android, and view sticky headers. And there's a lot more coming up as well. And if you check out the blog post, you can see it here, published uh, just about 10 days ago, or a couple of weeks ago. And you can see here everything that has been tweaked. So the Good Life dashboard, you can see how they've done it and how you can then use the various different updates to get the most out of it. So that's a great one from Ample Note. I did like this one, the time travel through productivity. So you can see what you've been up to on any given day. So that is, that is great. I'm sure there'll be a plugin for Obsidian for this one soon, if there isn't already. But well worthwhile having a look through Ample Note and seeing the latest updates that they've got going on. And of course, you can also see the change log with Ample Note um, through this one and seeing what they're up to and working on in kind of real time. So great stuff from the Ample Note team on that one. Tana, they've had a few updates, uh, new AI models especially, so Gemini 3.0 and GPT 5.1, they've been added to, to Tana, um, added native capture widgets for iOS and Android, sidebar progress has been added, checkboxes and improved streamlined AI picker. Uh, so lots of updates in the Tana app to make it worthwhile, and especially the last one, um, it's streamlined AI model picker that can save you 50 to 95% of costs while improving the performance. So definitely worthwhile making sure you are on the latest app for that one. And then there is an event uh, from Theo. So if you want to come along and see the Tana team build some useful live searches uh, through 10 of the most common and valuable live searches that they have in mind or that the users are posting about, you can then come along and see how to build them. So follow along and see how they're constructed, submit your own search challenges and learn practical patterns. It is on Wednesday the 26th and you can register as usual through the Luma link. Logseek, they had an update to the Logseek CLI 0.4. Uh, that's just been released with a couple of more things. So added new commands of import EDN and validate with a lot of other changes which you can see 
in the GitHub with various different tweaks and fixes and additions that the team has built up. They are still testing the RTC and end-to-end -end encryption and the mobile app on iOS for the time only, so more news on that soon, I'm sure. Octarine, they've ver released version 0.30.2, uh, LM Studio Provider, so you can now add that as an AI assistant or an AI provider, and then various different other improvements as well that the team has done. And I believe there's the graph search, which I think is great, because um, using the graph alone I don't think adds much value, but if you use it with the search, you can actually find the knot and see what's connected to through the graph search. Obviously, you could just go to the page and do a page graph, um, but this is, I think, great. So it is coming soon. I don't think it's been released yet, so definitely something worthwhile checking out. Capacities, um, Savage Reviews, they looked at capacities and basically just gave their thoughts of comparing it to Obsidian and Notion. And a bit of a teaser, it does work very well, but the comments on the app uh, leave a lot to be desired. So definitely worthwhile having a look at this video uh, just to see if it matches with your thoughts and if you believe the criticism is fair on the mobile app. I find they've released 0 0.25.4 and 0 0.25.5, um, lots of improvements, so improved Notion Importer, sync handling with the doc, hand, doc um, cleaner exports, new translations, uh, database blocks, etc, etc. Electron and Next.js has been upgraded to for stability and improvements and a few server side improvements as well. And what they have done is they have introduced callouts so you can have basically callout messages on your pages so that you it stands out to you. So lots of great stuff as well coming to the Affine team after quite a bit of silence from them. Lazy, they've had a few releases um, in the past few weeks or so and they've now added a monthly billing option so rather than doing yearly you can now do monthly if that is to your inkling and you can also find it a little bit cheaper without the AI layer so $6 a month or $8 a month annually uh, or monthly and you can also get a two week free trial for new signups so if you are in doubt and you want to test it out definitely do just sign up two week free trial and then you can see how it goes and on top of that they've also shipped the capture to notion so quick quick capture and it goes direct into your notion uh, space vault whatever notion calls it so you can see a quick video here choose where it goes and it goes directly into your notion space so some great stuff from the lazy team. You can capture some videos from anything from blog posts and put it directly to notion and a lot of other spaces as well so not only limited to notion it's just that notion is the latest one that they've released Heptoace, they've had a few updates in version 1.78.12, so automatically fetch transcript when importing YouTube videos, Gemini 3.0 and 5.1 models, they removed GPT-5 but then they added it back, but then they removed GPT-5 Nano and Gemini 2.5, and a few other fixes that they've implemented as well. And Noti, they've got enhancement of text elements on the whiteboard, canvas right click, sticky notes and batch show hide images. So again, you can see the videos here with the various different updates that the Naughty team has implemented in terms of the latest updates. And the good thing about Naughty is that they published recently what they're working on and what things they're planning. So improve the compatibility of Markdown import, that's nearly done. And convert between mind map and Markdown, that's just about done and it's in alpha testing. They've got some publishing coming up highlights the cards and as well for 2026 what they've got planned is the web app and a mobile app so for now they've just been focusing on the desktop app but the mobile and the web app are coming publishing features so you can have a custom domain viewing password comments and stats and also real-time collaboration so some great stuff coming to naughty in 2026 or at least planned on that phase craft um, i just seen that they've got a 40 percent off if you want to subscribe to craft so if you're in doubt and I've been thinking about it, now might be the right time to do it because you do get 40% off. Just click on the link, just go to the Craft website page and then you can sign up at the top. It should come up and you can see you do get the discount here. So well worthwhile having a look at that one. And if you want to know what the latest things that Craft has implemented, definitely do check out this video uh, from Feel Productive where he talks us through the redesigned iOS app, um, one tap creation for mobile, craft assistant for Apple, rework tasks tab, 
collection improvements and various different other things that the craft team has implemented. And in fact, what I did see is if you want to of the page. a discount, and if you follow this link and you click on his affiliate link, you can get 50% off lifetime rather than 40% off direct going through craft. So something to think about on that one. And last but not least, we have Thymer, who have published the latest demo, um, or the latest tease, I should say. And you can see here different views of books, sort by year, sort by modified date, sort by whatever it is that you want. We then can scroll through the collection quite easily with the keyboard. And you can scroll through any other page as well and sort them out as you want. And if you follow the Twitter page, there is, I think, another demo somewhere else that they do publish. Um, but you can probably find it if you follow him. So, uh, Thymer is coming soon, but still no app yet. So we shall find out on Monday if there is any update to the release notes or to the release date. So that was it for this week. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next week. Bye.